Welcome to Venezuela in Focus, the only podcast in English directly from Venezuela about Venezuelan and Latin American issues. I'm Oscar Schlenker. I'm Roberto Hung. Oscar, let's say some let's let's do something. Let's not focus only in Venezuela, but in the in the region region in general. Yeah, because the region is up in arms, riots, protests everywhere, and Venezuela seems to be relatively calm. But Let's see. Not that much. Let's we'll see. talk about it. So, where do we begin? Because there's a lot to talk about the region right now. What about if we begin from the north? Well, let's start in the U.S. Right. Uh, we saw uh, some weeks ago that Venezuela became uh, re-elected into the U.N. Uh, Human Rights Council. Uh, and all of this during uh, after a very damaging report from the U.N. Human Rights Council on human rights in Venezuela. I remember Michel Bachelet came here. We talked about it in our podcast. Uh, you know, to talk about human rights in Venezuela, you have to talk about torture, uh, political prisoners. You have to talk about massive human rights violations in terms of uh, access to water, access to the internet, access to energy, electricity. I mean, we haven't done this podcast in weeks because we had electrical problems. Yes, but I guess it's important to first understand a little bit how UN works. Because they have some councils and they have some offices. The Human Rights Council is another thing, different thing of the office of Michel Bachelet. The thing that Michel Bachelet indeed came and it was, you know, they draft at this uh, meeting, this uh, information and this act that, well, yes, is really, really, really hard, the situation in Venezuela concerning human rights. But at the same time, you have the council, like the, you have the, the Security Council and the Human Rights Council. It means that Venezuela then had a great time defending uh, human rights. Well, no. Because one thing is the information and the investigations doing by the office. And another thing is a political uh, votation, a political ballot and a political situation in which Venezuela, well, acquired this membership during for two, two years. Is it good? Is it bad? Probably, like we were saying, talking uh, uh, some hours we before. Saw, we saw earlier, it might be a magnifying glass over Venezuela. So you have to be, you know, very, yeah. very cautious of what going on, what's going on with that. But there was indeed a lobby from Venezuela to uh, have a seat at that U Human Rights Council, and they achieved it. Yes, and we'll see how is it, you know, used in social media in general. You know, yeah. Venezuela is the first uh, country respecting human it, rights and, and, well, and so on. But do you think it so damages the UN to have a country that is so criticized for the human rights well, violation the in their human rights council? UN is very criticized too. Right now, and, yeah. Well, and, well, not right now. Always has been oh, criticized, yeah. but has been criticized. But well, probably because we're suffering this, you know, directly. But this situation is really hard, I mean, to understand. For me, it's because I had the chance to study some stuff concerning Venezuela left or pretend to left or the government, not the country. Because one thing is the country and another thing is the government and the regime being out the inter-American system. Yeah. So they left started, the interim, they left it. They, well, they, I don't want to say they left it because there are another studies because who are the people entitled who was entitled of the human rights? Mm. Us, you, me, not the states. So when you talk about human rights, it's not like any treaty that you know you you know, I renounce the treaty of uh, free trade because it's among the states. This special kind of treaties of international law of human rights, who are the per persons entitled us. So the states cannot freely you know, getting out of the system. So one of the studies in the Inter-American Court and Inter-American Commission were being studied that. So, but what happened in Venezuela? 
with this inclusion as a member, permanent member of during these two years in the council. Is it a prize? Is it a political uh, situation where the, the votes were, you know, no. it's, it's tough. I'm, I'm, I'm really no. concerned. It is concerning, especially because we're seeing that states are becoming weaker. Uh, especially in, in the U.S., we're seeing that the state has become weakened as well. Or do you think that Trump has become weakened by all the troubles in the U.S. right now, which in turn affects all of Latin America as well, sadly to say? Well, the United States, they have, they have their own matters. With this uh, impeachment, yes, impeachment, no. Uh, with this situation, they, they go next year, they, they have elections too. So they're in campaign. They're running the campaign. Um, one thing for sure is that we can't expect that anyone no. outside our own countries, of course, the help and the situation, it, it has a lot to do with it, but we can't expect that. We can't expect for somebody to come save us from our own problems. And, uh, you know, talking about weak states, let's talk about Mexico and its president, Lopez Obrador. They, uh, uh, during the week, they uh, imprisoned one of El Chapo's sons, and in Culiacán, all hell broke loose. Uh, all these um, narco, followers, well, narco followers, employees, and let's call supporters. Item, supporters of uh, El Chapo Sun went to the streets with war machine guns and completely destroyed the city or stopped it or blocked everything. And citizens were terrified. They couldn't get out. What was the response of the government? They, free, they released, they, they released, they released the son of El Chapo. So that that's a weak state. A weak state or a failed state. Because failed the state, state. It, it has a, a reason for their own existence is to promote, you know, the control. That's what they say. And the security of all. So if you release one of the most wanted persons in Mexico and you freely release it, so you are accepting that you are not strong enough to fulfill what support what you're supposed to <laughs> exist for. And excuse me for la laughing because it's not a laughable matter but no, the but family of this son of El Chapo later went on TV to thank the president <laughs> that they had released so, his son the, their family member this is just it's just ludicrous besides the the, the, the persons in there the Chapo and Lopez Obrador it's so the, the, the crime versus the state so the state Lost the war. I mean, lost the, the, the... Are they really in a war? Aren't they collaborative then in some way? So they are not prepared enough. It, it's, it's, it's very concerning. You and know what's difficult? To talk about another country different than yours. Yes, it's very difficult because we don't have the whole information. Uh, and, you and know, feeling, Venezuela, it's, it's Venezuela keeps us busy as it is. Because Venezuela has news every hour. Uh, so it, it is difficult, uh, but we have been hearing a lot about Mexico as well because that's where we've they been celebrated. Warning. We've been warning a lot of We've been times. warning a, a lot of what's going on in the region right now. I've seen we've some, been warning it for 30 years. I've seen some news exactly. The oh, yeah. ones that we saw, like happens with this uh, oil shortages, like happened with this special ID in order to have some social uh, resources, and so on and so on. I, I don't remember at all, but... And newsflash, none of it worked. But uh, we heard a lot about Mexico, too, because th that's where they celebrated this Puebla group that tr that's trying to be a front to the Lima group that we've talked about in other podcasts. Uh, and this Puebla group is... Some people, some analysts are blaming for um, preparing or organizing all the riots and protests that are going on right now in South America. How truthful is that or how accurate would that be to well, blame this Puebla group? Uh, well, it, it, considering our you know thoughts, previous thoughts about Mexico, so the states... You know, they lost the state entirely. I mean, we're not talking about in a specific state. So they, 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 they managed their, their importance. So they have these groups. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. the Puebla group. You have the Lima group. And you have the Sao Paulo <laughs> Forum. So what happens with the state? So we have certain people that they just want to support any idea. Ones are left. Another ones are right side of the... Of the. So you have four of the Sao Paulo was created by 
eh, Fidel. Castro, Fidel Castro. In order to do what? Well, in order to uh, promote this uh, all communist the idea. All the leftist movements and governments in South yeah. America, they convene every so often. And, you know, a lot of people are blaming this Foro de Sao Paulo, which met here in Venezuela a few weeks ago, for all the protests that are going on. There's a lot of conspiracy theories. There's a lot of fake news as well. Uh, but even Maduro uh, went out to say a couple that, days ago he, a couple he says, days, that they that the plans they set out in Foro de Sao Paulo are going on perfectly. So he's feeding into that conspiracy theory that everything was created in Foro de Sao Paulo. And we've seen well, some terrible things that going That over-information and misinformation is part of the plan. It's part of the plan. For, for you know, creating this ambiance of, you know, terror. Because what I think for sure is that this kind of regimes, they, they manage the, the terror and the mystery. Yeah, and I've been to Foro de Sao Paulo, not this one, but a couple of years ago, I went to cover it for a channel that I work for. And uh, they do this every year. They plan out what movements they're going to uh, set forth, what protests they have uh, to do during the year against the governments that go against the politics that they support. And it just so happens that this year, uh, it happened to coincide with a lot of discontent from people. Well, in, and the, well, before going that the content of people, because we have to go all the way to, to Chile, yeah. the, the yeah. situation in Chile is we interesting. We still have to go some, more, but more to the We have to explain this where story. this uh, the Lima group is in this you know playground, because we have this the Lima group was you know conformed in order to support the opposition resistance in Venezuela yes. for, you know, getting this uh, incorporation in the TR, uh, the, the, the Treaty of, uh, how you say yeah. it in English? Oh, that, it, it has El a name. TR, it's the right. treaty. It's the North, I think it's North Atlantic. I don't no, know. No, it, it is very similar, but it, El TR is... I'll famous. look for it right. on our friend so Google. The, the importance is that it exists right now. Rio, Rio the Rio Treaty. Ah, well, Rio Treaty <laughs> because it was signed in Rio. Oh, you know, it's interesting. We have Rio on one of, side, yeah. Sao Paulo on the other side. The other side. We have uh, the Lima Group in, um, in Peru, created in Peru in order to help Venezuela opposition, or let's call it institutionality. Yeah. And then you have this uh, Puebla Group in order to face, uh, to confront mm -hmm. uh, the Lima Group. So that means that our groups, 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 it's groups. overwhelming. Are, where are the states? Where are the states? At the same time. They're weakened. They're, where, they're, they're where weakened. the strong states? Because they're, one thing that they are you know, showing is that what justifies them, they justify the existence of the, of the states, mm -hmm. they're not working at all. Yeah, Security, um, promoting you know, services. Governance. Beyond governance. Yeah. Do you have uh, problems with water supply in your house? Yes. Electricity? Yes. So, any simple thing. I haven't had internet for a year in my house. Well, imagine that. Or or a landline. And what a has year. to do with with this politics? This the the Sao Paulo groups. What they do is to create situations of you know misery mm. and situations of uh, terror. I mean, you can call it uh, general criminality and stuff, but you are managing the situation. Yeah, but you know there is discontent as well. Okay, and what and happens? I, I'm, I'm going. Let's, let's. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there because uh -huh. we're talking Venezuela, and then what happened? Well, Ecuador. Ecuador was in the same path that Venezuela had with Correa, mm. and this guy Lenin. Lenin uh, Moreno. Mm -hmm. uh, tried to revert all, a lot of the things. And he was reverting that. Yeah. And well, you with had the IMF with help from the yes, IMF. Yes, also happens. Well, considering it's the differences with Argentina, also with Macri yes. getting to the power. But what happened then? Well, again, you have these uh, indigenous see, groups yeah. that they were, you know. Uh, some of people could say that they were paid for that, mm. and others would say that, well, it's genuine. It's, they're, they're... it's you know, it's sad to it's sad to think that indigenous groups can be manipulated like that, uh, but you know, it serves the theory in in terms of how easily it was 
to calm them down after a negotiation treaty. But this negotiation, how much, how much did things change? Well, but and after what and what did it cost? They almost they destroyed a lot of the city. Actually, we were seeing recently that they were uh, painting and trying to uh, uh, some political groups were trying to. Uh, you know, reconstruct all the damage done. Yes, but at the same time, it's coaches. not that those damages are not important. No, but the thing is that there are some things that are on the li- on under under the, the situation underlined. Yeah, underlined that. But the thing is, then you have Venezuela, then you have Ecuador with indigenous indigenous groups, then you have Peru. What happens in Peru? Another institutional. Uh, clash with that, that the presidency is, yeah. and 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 the Congress. And I think that I think they managed it well. I think that what they did was that they got a heads up. They maybe knew what was going on or what was going to happen, and they acted fast. And they dissolved the contra- con- uh, Congress. And uh, a lot of people in Peru supported it because they came out with polls. You know whether you but, support polls or not, because polls can be manipulated. But, but they were all in favor of the situation in Peru. But again, but again, that show us in all the situations that the states has the idea they're weakened. They are weakened. States are weakened. We saw that Lenin Moreno uh, bowed down to the protests uh, and negotiated, um, regardless of whether he had uh, good or bad intentions with. This ray or the taking away the subsidies of uh, uh, the gasoline, uh, but you know, he uh, he went under. Okay, and let's go a little bit further south. Now to I'm the most Ch- to the most Chile. recent uh, protest in Chile. Um, terrible, terrible! What's going on there? And initiated also by the claim for public transportation. I think they raised something more more or less 30 cents of a dollar but again it's not a thing that 30 cents is much or not probably you raised one cent and if you have these people that the only job is you know to create mystery and power and, 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 and terror it this could happen i saw some pictures and some videos of buildings high buildings they, they in were flames, in, in flames, up in flames. I mean, and it and it's sad to see that happen in Chile because a lot of us saw Chile as uh, an example of how a state uh, should be managed because they were they are the most prosperous nation in, in Latin South America. In, in, Latin America, in, Latin America, America. in Latin America in general. Uh, you know, things work there. Actually, they actually work, or so we thought. Because, uh, yes, they started protesting because of the uh, raise in the, in the metro ticket. Um, now there is no metro for a couple of months because they destroyed some of the wagons. And it's just been all hell broke loose. But, you know, is it shooting yourself on the foot to just go and destroy the things that uh, you're upset about paying a bit more? Uh, I think they well, a lot of Walmarts down there. I didn't even know there were Walmarts in Chile. They were ransacked. Uh, a lot of people will say that it's yeah. you know the imperialists of United States. They are you know taking all over the yeah, region. Beyond that, beyond it's that, very it's, it's, it's very sad. It's very sad to see that happen in Chile, and it's very sad uh, to see that there's no control. The idea of these groups, and um, I mentioned especially the uh, Sao Paulo, Foro de Sao Paulo, is to create terror and manage it. So once you you have this portion of land with some people and you start to recover the idea of institutional institutionality and um, elections and stuff, they try it again to, to chuck. But I'll argue, I'll still argue, there is discontent within the people. And we see it in Bolivia. And we cannot blame Foro de Sao Paulo for the protests that are happening in Bolivia because uh, people in Bolivia are protesting. It's for, another direction. It's another direction. It, they're protesting against Evo Morales because they are saying that the recent elections were a fraud and Evo Morales is one of the big supporters of Foro de Sao Paulo. Uh, and he leads a leftist government as well. So the people that are protesting in Bolivia, and we're seeing very similar protests. They're destroying 
buildings. Well, They're setting things on fire as well. But it's a totally different direction. You can't blame for this for to that cre- discontent. But it's also a situation of the Foro of Sao Paulo because it's a, an effect of that. It is an effect. Well, it, is an effect. Uh, it is really, really, really difficult and sometimes irrespectful to talk about another another countries. Yes. And more if you don't haven't lived there. I had never been in Chile. But in Venezuela for sure we have, you know, this recipe, we know it. Oh, We've been God. there, done that, we got a t-shirt. We know everything that's going on in the region from our own experience. Well, not everything, but we have an idea well, but, of but, what's but, going on. But if I tell you... we've lived through this. If I tell you, imagine this space that is called Country X. And this group of people takes the power, or is before taking the power, they, you know, they show up publicly and saying, I'm going to run for this election and I promise you guys a new constitution with this social uh, rights and you know what we're going to head up all the take all the heads of the of the people with money because we have to you know we have to spread up all the the the, the, the rich the wealthness of the country you know what it tends to it's the same so if you see all the stories in Latin America began with the same Evo Morales Change the constitution. The constitution mentioned it that you can run, rerun for election. He went to this uh, uh, referendum for the approval or not. Yeah, what he happened? Lost the this referendum. Of Venezuela. And he didn't. He didn't listen to it. The same thing happened with Chavez. Yeah, we. And uh, the same thing is going on with all this. So that's Foro of Sao Paulo, and that's the the, the legacy of this guy who died. He this uh, Castro. Mm. Or, or, or it's not true that during the 60s, he, you know, when, when he took over the one of the 50s, and then the 60s, he took over the, all the entire people of Cuba, and he did, did mention expressly that well, I'm going to leave the, the country, and we're going to have yeah. free and open uh, elections. Where are they? That's giving a lot of credit to Fidel Castro. I'd like to end with uh, our. Um, traditional Venezuelan saying in English. And the Venezuelan saying this week, or in this episode, is ni tan calvo ni con dos pelucas. Because we're just seeing that there's so much extremism going on in the region. Uh, it's so hard to come uh, forth and, and and go through the center and try and dial and really negotiate and, and, and bring things up. So I say, um, not bald nor with two wigs. Uh, that's the saying, ni tan calvo ni, to, ni con dos we pelucas. Keep, we keep in the, in the middle of it. Trying to, keep, trying to keep things sane, at least, because all this extremism, it's not bringing anything good to our, to our continent, not from one or from the other side. Well, let's invite, so, let's invite our old friends yeah. from Chile. I would like to know what they can say from Chile, from Ecuador, from uh, Peru, so we can have more information directly from them. And see, this show you didn't have the attempt with the with the light, the killing light. Yeah, the other yeah, <laughs> yeah. We didn't have killer lights today. We do have electricity. Thankfully, we have water as well, um, and uh, we have a little bit of sense of peace right now in Venezuela, uh, which is interesting enough. It's it's kind of funny that we've seen the biggest migration of Venezuelans in history, uh, or. or In the continent, the biggest migration of peoples in history, uh, and we have you know, Venezuela's history. Yes, yes. Never before have been a lot of people yeah. like we're experiencing right now leaving so the country. We're sure we have Venezuelan friends in Argentina, in Chile, in Ecuador, in Peru, in Bolivia, in Uruguay, which is wow. going to celebrate elections soon as well. No, in Madrid, Paraguay. we left. We left Madrid outside. Oh, Madrid they had that's riots a too. whole other show. But we'll, we'll talk about. But <laughs> well, see you next time. Thanks for watching and follow us. Hasta la próxima and stay fit. Stay safe. <laughs> Ciao.